Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy Morgan from CodeCloud. Welcome to today's lesson from our GitHub Copilot in Action course. In this video, you'll discover how GitHub Copilot can revolutionize your coding experience. If you're eager to explore more and unlock the full potential of AI-driven development, be sure to check out the complete course details below. Let's dive right in. Okay, so we're gonna do some basic code completion in GitHub Copilot, so I can kind of show you how it works. So we're gonna create a Python file here. Now you can see here, immediately it says, press Command key and I to ask GitHub Copilot to do something. Now let's close this GitHub Copilot chat and just do the I. And it says, ask Copilot to do something. So I can say, hello world in Python. And I can just give it a command, it'll start churning, and there we go. And I can say accept, discard, or I can regenerate it and see if it comes up with something else. And in this case, there aren't too many variations on this, so we can hit accept. And our hello world works. Now, let's try some other things here. Imagine we need to write a function to calculate the factorial of a number. Well, instead of typing out the entire function, which again is a, a pretty straightforward process, we can start with a simple doc string. And sometimes this stuff will automatically already start. As you can see, what I was going to type in here, it already knows basically what I'm gonna do, but let's say that it doesn't. And so instead of this, we can put in a doc string. Now, GitHub Copilot can tell what I'm trying to do just basically based on what I've named this method and the parameter I put in, it's kind of can see what I'm trying to do. But let's show another method for doing this. And that's a doc string. And we can say returns the factorial of a given number. Now, if we put in this doc string here, we can then ask Copilot to generate it, or Copilot will come up with something like this. So when you put it in your doc string, you can say this function does X, GitHub Copilot will make an attempt to write this out for you. So that's one way that it does code completion. And it will instantly suggest the complete function implementation if it can guess what your function is trying to do. So as you saw, when we typed in up here, def factorial, et cetera, it kind of guessed, oh, I, I think I know what this person's trying to do and it spits it out. But if it doesn't do that, then you can use this doc string and you can explain your function and it will do it based on that as well. Now let's say we have a list of dictionaries that are representing users and we want to extract a list of usernames. We can go down here and say usernames equals and you can see right here, it auto-completes. This is such a common thing in Python that GitHub Copilot knows, hey, I think this is probably what you want to do. So we'll do that auto-complete. And we'll check our terminal and let's see if it works. And it doesn't. Because we need to print out usernames. So I can go here and put in a comment. Print each username. And there's the step we're missing. And now we have Michael, Sanjeev, and Jeremy. So these are two different ways. And when you start to do things that are pretty standard, pretty straightforward, GitHub Copilot does a great job of guessing what it thinks you mean and what it thinks you need. As soon as I typed in usernames, it automatically thought, well, I bet this programmer is trying to find the name, not the ID, and just display the names. So this is great. Now let's say we're working with a file and we want to gracefully handle exceptions when the file isn't found. What can we do? Well, we'll do a try except, and you can see that immediately GitHub Copilot has looked at this and says, okay, they're trying to open data.txt. How about file not found error, right? That's one of the most common ones ever. So it'll do a file not found error. Next one, we could say default data, print data. 
Okay, and so we don't have a data.txt, so let's see what it says. Default data. So, so we have some custom information we can put in here. And we can say, file not found, silly. And GitHub Copilot kind of guesses what you, you're going to look for and what you need. And notice, we can just put exception in here and have any old kind of exception. We can do generator exit, exception group, just exception E. And here we can see error number two, no such file or directory, data.txt, etc. But it's kind of nice that GitHub Copilot immediately says, ah, the first one you're probably going to need is a file not found error. We can deal with other types of exceptions later, but this is just one of the easy ways that GitHub Copilot does code completion. Okay, and let's say we want to use the requests library to make an API call. And we'll type in import requests. GitHub Copilot knows this is probably what we want to do. We can go here and it says, you know, that there's an error here, we have a warning, and here's a set of fixes that we can use. We can remove the unused import, we can remove all unused imports, type ignore, etc., or fix using Copilot. And you can see here, it says you need to install the request library using pip. All right, awesome. Now over here, if we go to the right, we can say insert into terminal, insert at cursor, which insert at cursor isn't gonna help us here, because pip needs to be run down in our terminal, or we can copy it. Let's click on insert at terminal. And now we have a pip install requests. We can install requests, we can say close. There we go, now we're good. And now if we do response equals, you can see it automatically knows probably how you're gonna use requests based on naming that variable response, it's gonna say, here's a pretty typical thing that people are looking for when they're building a response. They're usually doing a request.get or a request.something. So Copilot will likely suggest the get method and kind of guide you towards building the URL and handling the process. Now, you can also view this kind of thing in chat, right? You can say, Let's just make this an, an error on purpose. Put requests.test, response code. And we can see here, oh, request has no attribute named test. Well, let's go in here and ask GitHub Copilot, why isn't this working? GitHub Copilot is going to check out my code, and it says, the request module doesn't have a test method. You should use a get method instead. Another way you can do this, we can say accept. Another way you can do this, of course, is opening up the chat. So you can say GitHub Copilot chat. Why isn't my code working? This sounds really basic and simple, but this is uh, exactly what you can do to ask and say, here it says, I need more information. What isn't working as expected. And I can just say, it's just throwing an error. I've done some tests where this has worked out pretty well. To help diagnose the issue, what kind of error are you getting? And you can go in here. And again, this is part of the code completion. We can say, apply an editor, insert at cursor, or copy. So you have those three each one has its pluses and minuses. I've seen it when you go to apply an editor, I've seen it remove code that it shouldn't remove. So being fully transparent, this isn't always the best way. Cursor can be interesting because it's going to install this entire, you know, all the way up to the import request, it's going to install all of that at the cursor. So um, you may not want to do that. Usually copy I've found is the best thing is copy and then look in there, but let's do apply an editor just so we can see how it works. Here, apply an editor, it changes our code for us, and we have the option to accept the changes, discard them, or show the changes. 
Now here, when we do show changes, this is a basic common diff type thing that you're probably familiar with, where it says red, we're going to remove these two lines. We're going to replace it with this. And you can hit accept changes. There we go. Now this is going to produce basically the same thing, but actually it's not going to replace the same thing because it fixed the error. Let's make it break again. And that's going to produce basically the same thing, but it's going to be handled with an exception. So in this demo, we just kind of looked at some of the really basic stuff and GitHub Copilot is an awesome tool for beginner or experienced developers. As an experienced developer, you might use it a little bit different. And we're going to look at that in this course, but by leveraging these code capabilities, once you start getting good at it, get the hang of it, you'll really streamline your workflow. You'll be able to work faster, build code faster, things like that. So some of the good things about GitHub Copilot, it automates repetitive tasks. You know, we started to write out a method and GitHub Copilot said, Hey, I've seen this method a million times. Here's what it probably is. So it automates the repetitive stuff, reduces your errors because it's suggesting syntactically correct most of the time and semantically meaningful code most of the time. Um, and it kind of boosts your creativity because you can explore different approaches. Sometimes it'll suggest something new and uh, you can spend less time on the boring stuff and more time on the fun stuff. But enough of that, let's jump in and build a real project with GitHub Copilot. Thanks for watching. If you're ready to take your coding workflow to the next level with AI, don't miss our full GitHub Copilot in action course here at CodeCloud. Experience hands-on labs, interactive games, and expert guidance to help you master GitHub Copilot and supercharge your productivity as a developer. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more fantastic content. Click the link below to get started with the complete course and experience AI-enhanced programming for yourself.